That's a big one. How many different families is that? The Cisneroses or Floreses? Who all? <coughs> you're Hernandez, but you're Flores. Yes. You probably couldn't even name all the different families at the no, time. No, no. Mm -hmm. He's tried. You no. Mix them out. Coronados are part of the family. Coronados? Perons? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's a big family. Yes, Amen. Did you hear that? She felt like the Lord was saying to her that, that a yoke of poverty needs to be broken off of uh, maybe more than one, but at least someone in this room. And so if that's you, you don't have to lift your hand if you don't want to, but at least on the inside, lift your hand. Just say, I receive that. Father, break off an impoverished spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. God, we pray that as Deuteronomy 28 promises us that when we're obedient to you, the blessings of God will follow after us, chase us down, and wrestle us down. Hallelujah. We can't escape your blessings whenever we're obedient to you. Right. Father, we pray, oh God, a spirit of obedience to break off the spirit of poverty in Jesus' yes, name. In Jesus. Prosper every Jesus. soul, we pray. Yes, in Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Amen. Jesus. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 5, the title of the message is Compelling Love. Compelling Love. The word compel actually comes from two words put together. The prefix com, C-O-M, com, means to, to associate with or, or together with. And the word pel, it makes up the last part. The suffix pel means this, means to, to drive or coerce or force to do something. Forcibly urge someone to do something. Compel. We're going to talk today about a compelling love. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. If you can get the gist of this message, it will, it will set you free today. I mean, I want to be set free. Amen. 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 I mean, literally, it, 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 will, it will change your outlook of things if you can get the gist of, of the message today. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I'm going to begin reading uh, in verse 12. We do not commend ourselves again to you, Paul says, but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf, that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God, and if we are of a sound mind, it is for you. Verse 14, for the love of Christ compels us, because we thus judge, or judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all. That those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him Thus, longer, if anyone is in Christ Jesus, he's a new crea creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, the old King James, you, instead of saying compel, if you, read, if you were reading yourself out of the King James, it would say the love of Christ constrains us. And, and you know, when I was, when I was looking at the, two diff the differences in the translations, I thought, in my own mind, I was thinking, well, that seems to say two different things, compel, constrain, until I looked up the real definition, and they are one and the same. Um, to compel is to, to, to forcibly cause something to be, which means when, when we're forced into it, it constrains us from other things. You know, the love of God ought to constrain us from doing certain things. Right. Amen. The love of Christ Jesus in us ought to constrain us from being ugly. <laughs> it ought to compel us to speak kindly one to another. 
Right? Because this word that is, is translated, I, I think compel is a better translation than constrain, though they really mean the same thing. But in our English understanding today, constrain may, may seem like in some way you're restricted. But, but really, that if you're compelled to something, it will restrict you in other places. I mean, if you're compelled to serve Christ, it's going to restrict you from some things in the world. That's right. Right? That's right. And so, uh, um, if, we, if we come to that place where the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, according to Romans chapter 5 and verse 5, when we, how do we know that we have, that we love Christ? How do we know we have the love of Christ? Because we're compelled. It's like we have no choice. I understand free will. Please don't misunderstand me. I know God, you always say, well, God gives man free will. Yes, he does. But let me tell you something. When you know the love of God. Mm -hmm. That's right. When you are compelled by the love of Christ, it's just, it's just as if you have traded your free will in and said, God, whatever you want. I know that I can do what I want, but I'm so compelled by your love for me and my love for you that it's not what I want anymore. It's what do you want? Mm -hmm. That's right. What do you want? The word, the Greek word is seneco. And it's it's found in it's found in several several scriptures. And let me just give you some definitions of seneco, the same Greek word that's translated compelled, where he says, For the love of Christ compels us. It means to hold together. To hold together. Listen, when you... It's, it's, it, and this, this holding together is in the context of, of something being squeezed so that no, no part of it shall be lost. When the sum total of it will be kept together, you'll lose no part of it. As if you're surrounding and compressing it, that nothing can be lost. I mean, the love, the love of God that compels us, it squeezes us, it, it, it holds us together. Amen. Amen. I am held together. You are held together by the love of God. That's right. Amen. His love holds me. His love surrounds me. His love squeezes me. His love constrains me. His love compels me. That's right. Glory. So it means to hold together so that something won't fall away from it. And it's got some, some could be considered negative connotation to it. It's to hold together with constraint or to, or to compress, to press, press together with the hand. Matter of fact, the one place it's used in the scriptures is in Acts, where Paul is preaching the gospel and people began to compress their ears. They shut their ears off and ran towards Paul, angry. They shut their ears off from hearing the gospel. They compressed them. There, there it has a negative connotation. It has another place in the scripture where it's talking about uh, 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 Peter's mother-in-law and she was taken with sickness. It's the same word, Seneco. Taken with. She, was, she, she became ill. Taken with sickness. And Jesus came and healed her. So it has some negative connotation. It was, she was constrained by the sickness. She couldn't get up and serve them. The sickness had constrained her. But Jesus set her free. Amen. Now listen, in, in the context of a positive, in a, in a positive connotation, we ought to be infected with love. Amen. Love ought to infect us in such a way. Yes. That's right. I mean, come on, we all know what it's like to have an infection. We say, you know, I used to do this, but I'm sick now. I'm constrained in my bed. I can't get up and do the things I want to do because sickness has a hold of me. Listen. Love ought to constrain us like that. We ought to be so held and constrained and infected with the love of God. Lord, amen. I mean, we ought to be love sick. Amen. Love infected. Oh, come on. Are you catching this? Amen. He said we are compelled. The love of Christ compels us. It's this irresistible force. It's this, the, 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 the love of God is driving us. I mean, think about Paul, the man who's saying this, who was stoned and beaten and scourged. 
ran out of cities, left to die, shipwrecked in the ocean. Remember, he talks about all the perplexing things right before we get to this, and he went through. Well, why would you go through something like that, knowing that if you open your mouth to preach the word of God, you may get re re receive stones, literal stones, or you may be beheaded, or you may be crucified, or you may be ran out of town. But why? Because Paul said, the love of Christ compels me. I cannot keep my mouth closed. I'm infected with the love of Christ. It doesn't matter what man does. I'm so infected with his love. I'm so surrounded. I'm so compressed. I'm so squeezed in by his love. I can do nothing else. Amen. Glory. Mm. Help us out. Hallelujah. In the Gospel of Luke, the Scripture talks about a city that's besieged, surrounded on every side. So that it, it's, 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 it's not able to escape. It's trapped in the city, surrounded by its enemy. This is, this is compelling love. This is Seneco, surrounded by love. I'm pressed in on every side by the love of Christ. If I turn behind me, there's his love. If I turn to my right, there's his love. If I turn to my left, there's his love. If I look ahead, there's his love. Who can know the breadth and the depth and the height of his love? That's right. It surrounds me. Man. I'm kept by his love. That's right. I'm kept in his love. And I'm kept so that I can love. Lord. Help us, Lord. The word talks about, Seneco means, talk, means also a straight. Not straight as you would think, like straight as an arrow, but a straight as if geographically where a ship might be going through a straight. It's a place where a ship would pass through where it was land on either side. Maybe, maybe canyons, maybe cliffs. And once the ship has entered that strait, there's no place to go but ahead. It can't turn around. It is, it, is, it is compelled to go forward through it because it cannot turn. There's no room to wiggle or turn. Listen, we should be kept straight by the love of God. Right. Compressed into this narrow, this narrow place where all that we can act upon and, and react to is the love of God. Mm -hmm. The love of Christ compels me. Why does the love of Christ compel me? Why should the love of Christ compel you? Why did the love of Christ compel Paul? He tells us right here because one man chose to die for every man. That's right. Thank you, Lord. One died that all might live. One who knew no sin became sin that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ That's right, Jesus. Amen. Oh, do you love Jesus? Yes, amen. 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 Do you love him? Yes. Come, on. Come on. No one ever did that for us. That's right. God didn't have to do that. Why did Christ do that? Because he was compelled by love for you and I. Mm -hmm. That's right. When he got into a straight the night before his crucifixion, mm -hmm. he got into a strait where he said, Oh God, if there's any other way, yes, he did. let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours. He was compelled by love for you and I. He was compelled by the love of his Father. Amen. And he said, Listen, I'm in a dire strait right now. God, I, I, is there any other way? Whatever, but your will is what I want to do. Yeah, that's right. How can we not love him? He didn't die because he had to. He died because he wanted to. They didn't take his life, church. He gave his life. Amen. He gave his life. Yes, he did. Yes. No greater love can a man show his friend than to lay his life down for him. Oh, Christ was compelled because God is Love. Yes, he is. He was compelled by love for humanity. Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world that he gave. Yes. God so loved the world that he gave his only mm -hmm. begotten Son. Mm -hmm. That whosoever believed in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. God holds us in his loving hands, mm -hmm. he presses us together. We are hard pressed on every side. By the love of God. Amen. We are firmly held. You are in the vice grip of Christ's love. Amen. That's right. 
You can't get out of it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It has the meaning of, of, of a narrow uh, opening where, where those of you that work cattle like, like Brother Will does when you're going to go sell them and you work them from a larger container, you work them into a, uh, into a place they can't turn around and you're running them up that chute to get where they want to go. You're driving them up that chute. That's Seneco. Hmm. It's, it's, it's we get inside that, that chute, that tunnel of God's love and we, we can't turn around and His love is just... His love is forcibly and irresistibly pushing us and urging us and coercing us. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You see, if you can get mad at somebody and stay mad at him, you're not experiencing or walking in the love of God because the love of God is always urging us. Yes, amen, amen. Irresistibly to love mm -hmm. one another. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes, amen. Always the love of God is always, 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 always it traps our spirit. We cannot, listen, we cannot justifiably hate anyone. That's right. I'm compelled. I'm constrained by the love of God. I want to be mad at you. I want to hate you. But I'm constrained and compelled by the love of God to forgive you. Amen. That's right. Preach it. I'm compelled and constrained by the love of God from hanging on to these feelings. I got to let go because yes, the love amen. of God is yes, driving amen. me. Amen. Yes. Amen. amen. That's right. Up the tunnel of his love. Mm -hmm. That's right. Into the likeness of his son. Yes. Into the perfection of his only son. That's right. I can dig my heels in. <coughs> this word synecho means to hold completely. To hold fast. It's the, it's the word that's used of... of, of when they, when they arrested uh, uh, Paul and Silas, they were they were put in chains. They were arrested. Seneco, they were held together. Mm -hmm. Paul often referred to himself as a prisoner. The Lord's prisoner. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Come on, listen. I'm a prisoner of God's love. That's right. Amen. Amen. I've been shackled with his love. Yes. Shackled together with him. I'm compelled. Seneco. I am I'm shackled together. I'm a prisoner of his love. Mm -hmm. Glory. To hold fast. To hold completely. Pushing in on every side. Paul uses the same verb, Seneco, when he's talking in Philippians chapter 1. And he says this. He said, I am hard pressed on every side. Right. On one side, I want to leave to go be with Jesus. On the other side, I'm pressed to stay with you. I'm pressed in. on Seneca, I'm squeezed in with these two, these two desires. One to go be with Jesus, the other to stay here. I'm squeezed in. Mm -hmm. Then he said, but whatever the Lord wants, that's what shall be. Yeah, that's what I'll say yes to. That's the word Seneca. Listen, we ought to be. We ought to have love to the left of us, love to the right of us, love in front of us, love behind us. We ought to be surrounded by love in such a way that when we walk, the love cloud just goes with us. Amen. 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 We're walking surrounded by love. God is leading us into his love. Mm -hmm. And if he's leading us into his love, that means he's leading us into loving one another. That's right. Preach it. Come on. Now here's some words that are antonyms for compel. One is expel. That's to drive out. What do we do sometimes when we're not when we're not compelled by the love of Christ? We will expel people in our lives. We'll just drive them out of our life. Another one is repel. That's what that's what the the uh, rock climbers do when they when they're coming down a cliff. They're repelling. They're pushing off. Pushing away from and sliding down that rope and pushing away from the cliff and sliding down. That's called repelling. Repel is what we do with mosquitoes. We get mosquito repellent. That's right. And so listen, we, we ought to be surrounded by the love of God and we are surrounded by the love of God. But so often we put the stench of some kind of repellent on us. Preach it, preach it. And we, and we repel or we expel. When we ought to be impelling. Amen. When we ought to be impelling people with the love of God. Like a spear that would just 
and impale you, stick you to that chair, or stick you to the ground, or, or, or fasten you to the wall. Will I be impaling people with the love of God, not repelling or expelling? I'm compelled by the love of Christ to impel you with love. Why don't you take a moment right now and just bow your head. Close your eyes. You don't have to do anything. I just want you to meditate upon the Word of God, what you've heard so far. Who do you need to impale with the love of God? Because you've been repelling or expelling. My prayer is that the message today would compel you. The love of Christ would compel you to be a reconciliator, to be a peacemaker. Hallelujah. To walk in love. Oh, there's no better place to walk than to walk in love and unity. It's there that God commands a blessing. Maybe some of us had not had commanded blessings in our life because we've been repelling and expelling rather than being compelled to impel the love of God. So this is one of those, this is not one of those messages I want you to go home and forget. Lord, I pray you would sear it on every conscience. Amen, yes. Sear it in our spirit. Yes, Lord. May we catch with the attitude of Paul when he said, I don't want to know any man after the flesh. You see, the things that call us to repel, the things that cause us to expel rather than to be compelled by the love of God, is when we start knowing people after the flesh, we look at something in their rotten, stinking flesh, some disappointment or something they did, and we start knowing them after the flesh instead of knowing them after the Spirit of God. That's right, amen. That's right. We're guilty. When you start knowing somebody after the flesh, you might start repelling I'm pushing away from this, and I'm luring myself out of here. Or I'm climbing out of this thing. I'm pushing away, and I'm climbing out of it. Or you may just expel, I just expel them out of my life. But that's not the compelling love of Christ. Paul said, I, don't, I know you no longer after the flesh. I know you after the spirit. Amen. Amen. You see, when we are repelling or expelling, those who are born again, those that are brothers and sisters in Christ, just because we know something after the flesh, some expectation or some disappointment or something done, come on, we're to be compelled by the love of Christ. To walk in love. It should constrain us. If we're walk, listen, if you are being constrained by the love of God, you cannot walk fruitfully in that kind of attitude. If Paul would have walked in fear of every place that he went to preach, that he wouldn't be met with love, he would never went anywhere. You're not always going to be met with love. That's right. But you know what real love does? The love of God expects nothing in return. Do you know where we get angry with each other or we get upset or we get the, the apple cart gets turned over? It's because we did something we expected something in return. And we didn't get the return. Well, the moment we began to expect something, it's no longer a God pay love. That's right. It's either going to be phileo or eros love. A God may love, perfect love, the love of God expects nothing in return. Love just loves. It's like you love your children. If you were a good parent, you loved your children in spite of all of their failures, in spite of all of their weaknesses. And when you become a grandparent, it expands even further. And your children will be going, hey, you let them away more than you let me away with. That's right. Well, I've grown in love. Mm -hmm. The love of Christ compels me and constrains me from being angry at my grandchild. Oh, I know they did wrong. Oh, I know. I just love them so much. Mm -hmm. Somebody else sees them and sees them do this. They don't love them so much. Mm -hmm. But in the body of Christ, the love of Christ 
should compel us. Why? Paul tells us why he was compelled. Because he said, we've come to this conclusion that if one, that's Christ, died for all, then all died. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we've known Christ after the flesh. We thus no longer know him. Why? Because Christ is gone in his spirit now. He left, he ascended to heaven, he poured out the Holy Spirit. They used to say, well, you used to see Christ in the flesh. But now we see him in the spirit. So when we have to look beyond one another. That doesn't mean there's not discipline that, that, that happened. There should be discipline. We have to look beyond our faults and our failures in one another. Amen. To see beyond that and say, this is a child of God. Yes. Whether I like what they did or not, this is God's son. This is God's daughter. And the same God that loves me loves them. That's right. Preach it. That's right. And Christ died for them just as he died for me. Yes, he did. I have no right. Love gives me no right to hang on to wrongs. Mm -hmm. Love constrains us from hanging on to wrongs. Mm -hmm. Love compels us to let go of every wrong ever done to us. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yes. Come on, somebody needs to hear this. Yes, this amen. Come on. Amen. I would, my prayer would be that we'd become prisoners of His love. We'd become infected with a divine love infection. And this church would get so infected with the love of God. People would walk in and say, y'all are sick. Y'all are love sick. It's like there's just this big love feast every time I see you gather together. Y'all are sick. Amen. Glory. Amen. Yeah, we're love sick. Yes. We're amen. infected with the love of God. Yes. Amen. amen. Forgive us. You guys, you, 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 I mean, you just, you're bound to this love. It's like you're a prisoner of love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're bound. We're shackled. Mm -hmm. We're compressed. We're pressed in on every side mm -hmm. by the love of God. Amen. We started this journey in love, and we've got into a straight way, mm -hmm. and we can't turn the ship around. That's right. We started this love affair with Jesus. Mm -hmm. He started with us, and we're going with him, and that put us in a love affair with one another, and we're not turning this ship around. God won't let us turn it around and expel or repel. We're going forward. Amen. 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 There's no room in love for fear. That's right. There's no room in love for holding on to sins for perfect love. Cast yes, out amen. fear and covers a multitude of sins. Yes, amen. I know I've done some things, some sinful things. I'll probably make some of you angry. But I, ain't, I don't know that I've done a multitude of them yet. But even if I did a multitude, lust still covers that. That's right. Amen. amen. Preach it. Amen. Yes, amen. preach it. Glory. Yes. Now we tend to keep score. That's right. Uh, we, we tend to, it's kind of like, what have you done for me lately? You don't love to keep score. It makes no record of wrongs. Did you know that? Amen. That's what the that word, word says. Yes. Word of God says that. Mm -hmm. So if we're keeping records with one another, then we are not being constrained by the love of God. Preach it. Love is a broken record. Glory. <laughs> Come on. It just keeps getting stuck with that word love. Remember those old albums? You young people are too, too young to know this. But we used to have, to have things that just be turned around. <laughs> around and around. You put a needle on it. <laughs> and you had a speaker hooked up to it. Music came out of this plastic vinyl. <laughs> and sometimes if you wore that out, like I did some of my Led Zeppelin and, and, and Journey albums, you know, sometimes it'd get a scratch. <laughs> and it'd get stuck in one place. <laughs> yes, it would. I mean, come on. We've only scratched surface of God's love. Right, well, stuck right, there. Love, 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 right. Love. right. That's right. Get me past that. I want to. You'll never get past love. That's right. Amen. God's record is stuck on love. That's right. 
Any way you divide the scriptures, you come up with love. Come on. All the law is summed up in love. Amen. All of our service to Christ is as filthy rags unless it's done in love. That's right. I mean, listen, God scratched the record on love so that we couldn't get past it. He just keeps playing love over again. Hallelujah. Amen. When the devil's telling you you're worthless, God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. Thank you, Lord. Amen. When the devil's telling you somebody else is, is worthless, God will be saying, I love them. I love them. I love them. Amen. 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 Don't you want to love who God loves? Amen. Amen. Don't you want to love what God loves? Amen. We ought to be constrained and compelled by the love of God. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you getting this? Yes. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Father, I pray. Yes, Deposit Jesus, in every yes, spirit Jesus. this morning, oh God. That we're not to expel or repel, but we are compelled by the love of God to impel others with the same love with which we've been impelled with. Yes. God, you shot the arrow of love through my heart. Yes. Hallelujah. You captured me. I've been imprisoned by your love. And what a wonderful prison it is. Yes. Hallelujah. I've been infected by your love. And what a wonderful infection it is. I've been pressed together, constrained, squeezed together by love. But what a wonderful compression it is. You've compressed us so much in love that it's left the impression yes. of love upon our hearts. Yes. You see, when you've been compressed, squeezed in on every side by love, it'll leave the impression of love. In your heart. Amen. Father, I pray today yes, so. you would give love's impression mm -hmm. on every heart. In Jesus' name. Yes, Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Worship team, will you come back up here? Please. Mm -hmm.